So I'm here with Dave Peachy and we're at the NTSA border and just come from the Uluru Convention. Um, very long trip up from the Aboriginal TNMC in Canberra. Um, and we've got Dave Peachy here and he'd like to make a statement um, about some of the ongoing things and the issues that emerged at the convention in Uluru. Thank you. Like you said, I'm out here at the South Australia Northern Territory border and I am walking away there with a heavy heart in regards to the referendum dialogue and that is the last dialogue. So if you weren't aware of what was happening, we were told firsthand, seen it with our eyes and heard it with our ears, that the New South Wales Lands Council, all 28,000 members of you, are fully supporting this constitutional reform. So if you're not aware, I'd like you that are a part of 115 land councils plus in the New South Wales area to go down and see your local members to see if this is true. Because Roy RC had said that 28,000 members have fully supported this referendum council to their constitutional reform. So do you think those 28,000 individual land council members in New South Wales were given the opportunity um, to vote yes, because I'd be highly surprised if 28,000 out of 28,000 did vote yes. What well, do you I'm, think about that one? Well, I'm fully aware that our Dubbo mandate through our Referendum Council dialogue, our clear message was to come up here and vote no to the process of constitutional reform. And for those that aren't fully aware of what happens there, it's about the referendum holding that to put us, Aboriginal First Nations citizens, Aboriginal people as First Nations, into the citizenship that comes underneath, underneath, flies, underneath the Australian government. Um, and there are no rights involved in that for Aboriginal people, are there, Dave? No rights at all. If you're talking about language, law, cultural, cultural customs, that will all be given away to the power of the Australian government. So if you call yourself a First Nations person, this is about you having your voice heard from grassroots. And so this process, as you see it, is this about taking away Aboriginal sovereignty and giving um, authority to the Crown and the Australian Government that they didn't have previously? Which is why our, our voices weren't heard, which was why a part of our walkout happened, because our voices weren't heard in regards to a simple question. Yep. What is the Government asking us as First Nations people to be a part of? There's no clear message from the Government coming back to us to say what this will, this will involve. And so there was, these were secret meetings and I think we were all shocked that like hardly any of the local mob who, who live around Uluru or the towns around South Australia, nobody seemed to know about it at all, did they? Well, if I'm throwing this back out to Roy RC and his 28,000 members, how many of you mob other, that are part of the Lands Council knew about these referendum dialogues that was held in Dubbo, that was held in Sydney? The 13th meeting was held in Canberra capital territory that has over 6,000 First Nations Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people, yet I went along to that and there was about 38 people involved, you know, more than 12 facilitators. So that comes down to about 20 local people that were involved in a referendum that's going to have a huge impact on us, and not just us but our children's children. Because if we fall underneath the government, our sovereignty won't have happened with a treaty. The government will have all the power over us. Oh, there goes the hat. So <laughs> That's means, okay. Keep your, keep so your this, hat off. This means Fine. that we, as the people from grassroots level, need our voices to be heard. So I'm saying this back to you as, as a land council member. Are you fully aware of what's just happened up here in Uluru? So basically the names of the 28,000 people have been used to say yes to something that's going to get rid of Aboriginal sovereignty. And by the time this happens, the, the Mickey Long, Long Walk with Essendon and Carlton that's happening through the AFL, the Prime Minister and the Opposition are down there talking about what's happened up here at Uluru. So this is everything that you need to be aware of. NITV was shut out of those meetings. So how secretive is this from a referendum council that's supposed to be about us as grassroots that's got to have a huge impact us in the Constitution? And to be honest, you know, those meetings, no one was allowed to record them in the dialogues around Australia. And for, you know, such an important meeting that's really deciding the future of Aboriginal sovereignty, no, there was no recordings allowed in the meeting either, was there, Dave? No, not at all. And that happened with the 12 or 13 dialogues right around the country. So when you have something that is such a... It's going to have a, such a huge impact on us as First Nations people, you know, why has it been so secretive? Why all the secrecy behind something that everyone should be fully aware of? 
You know, you had NITV, you had Sky, you had ABC. Why was it this thrown into our, our lounge room so that people were fully aware? Our elders that have fought this fight, and I'll ask our elders, since 1967, have things gotten better for you as an Aboriginal First Nations person in your own country? Is it going to be better for our children's children after 2017 if this happens? If this vote yes goes through, and we're only 3% of the population, are we going to be coming back in 50 years' time and saying, let's change it? We're talking about a better opportunity for us as Aboriginal people, but it doesn't happen in the Constitution. It happens about us standing together united about bringing the people to the power. So really, I mean, when, when you talk about the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People and you see how sly and sneaky this process has been, um, that really doesn't meet um, free, prior and informed consent of First Nations people to have a say over their own lives, does it? It certainly doesn't. And when we look at the Dubbo Dialogue as well, a part of that process coming up here was this isn't a true consultation of the people out there in Western New South Wales. So out of the 100 invited people, I wasn't invited, but out of the 100 invited people, they had to go up there with a clear yes or no that was coming back. They didn't have the opportunity of going back and consulting with those people. Yeah. And if people ain't aware, this referendum council will be defunct come June 30. So they only have you know 30 odd days up their sleeve to be able to get back out to you at grassroots to let you know. Is that gonna happen? I don't think so. Yeah, and so what would you say, you know, to Roy RC and then also to all the other organisations who've um, played a role in this and they're working as organisations, you know, not as individual people and for the 180, around about 180 people um, who were not selected through the dialogue process but were actual employed facilitators of the referendum council who then had full voting rights, what would you say to, firstly to Roy RC about his role that you saw up there? Well, brother, you sold us out, plain and simple. And if you can look me in the eye and say that this is different, along with your 28,000 members, voting members, that are agreed upon with you to say that you have their full consent to go up there and sign that off, then, you know, I'll, I'll apologise to you if, the, if that does happen. But from my ears and my eyes, what I've seen up there, that doesn't look likely, you know. And we've cro we crossed one another in the street. We've grown up together. You know, for you to go out there and do that to us as peoples, you know, you need their consent. You need our voices. You know, for you to go up there and do what you've done is totally wrong. You know, to the people out there that's not fully aware, you know, log on. Do your little bit of homework. What does the Constitution mean for us as Aboriginal people? First Nations people, the treaty, the sovereignty. This is about us coming together so that we do have a brighter future. 50 mm. years, people, 50 years since the 67 referendum that we were known as fauna and flora, aliens in our own country. We talk about identity. You know, what's happening to the 85% of our incarceration rates? Did they get a voting right? So when they walk back into reality, do they know who they are as an Aboriginal First Nations person? There's so many things that are wrong within this constitution, that within this government parliament, that, that is affecting us on a daily basis. Yeah. We in New South Wales should thank our lucky stars coming out of the Northern Territory, having a green card, you know, a basics card that doesn't allow them cash. Now a power card, but they've got to actually go and buy their power. You know, we feel as though we've got privileges down in New South Wales. Look what's happening in our own backyard. The intervention's still happening in, New, in the Northern Territory. You know, these are things that are affecting our Aboriginal people on a day-to-day -day basis. We need to be acknowledged as the sovereign First Nations people. Yeah, and that's where there's been, you know... ...above the white man system. And so, for me, I saw a lot of people in that room who don't understand the power of their own sovereignty and really don't, you know, really represent at all, like, the voice of their communities because um, they're all hand-picked by the Referendum Council. And so, while some people had the best will and intent, um, you know, really there was only a, a, a handful of people. I think we had about 27 people who walked out. That was a mix of delegates and other First Nations people who just you know, felt that the process was sickening. What were your thoughts about that walkout process? Oh, well, something that happened. You know, when our voices weren't heard and when the Referendum Council was, weren't answering simple questions, a simple yes or no, a, a, a move, a motion about the intervention in the Northern Territory. You know, when we're asking simple questions and they dance around it, you know, that's when you know that the process is wrong. And the process has been flawed right from the very get-go. You know, invites only. 
how is this a true consultation of us as grassroots people about where we're going to sit in this in this political drama? So where's where's the process that needs to happen along the way? And when I come back to you as grassroots people, do you know anything about this? Do you know what's happening with us? You know, through this constitution, through the Australian government, you know, all this stuff that we talk about in regards to the new mining companies coming in, you know, our water systems dying every day, you know, and this is where we need to stand up and have our voices heard. You know, ask your auntie and auntie what it was like back before 67. Is this going to be better for us as a people? And there's people in there that are fully aware that they know the hidden agendas. They're not letting us know. So when we ask a simple question and we're not answered with the right answers, and the answers that ain't even there, that's why we walked out. Labeled troublemakers, labeled activists. Well, if we're not getting the simple questions that we need to take back to you, you know, our grassroots people from Miradjuri country, from Barkindji, from Camilleroy, we want to go back to you and say, this is how this referendum council looked, shaped, and this is going to form a, a brighter future. I can tell you now, brothers and sisters, it's not going to happen that way because the people at the heads of power obviously got different agendas. So that sounds like it was a pretty traumatic experience for you, but what are the next steps forward from here, Dave? This is about us going back home to our communities and talking with our mob, talking about if they know of what's happened through the referendum dialogues, if they know what's going to happen with the constitutional reform, watching what's going to happen on Monday night, the 29th of May, through ABC's Q&A about the referendum. Is it gotten any better for over these past 50 years? If they know about the Eddie Marbo 25-year anniversary of how he fought the courts to make sure that his family and his community, along with his tribes, clans and, and nations, were supported. You know, these are all the dramas that's facing us on a day-to-day -day basis. And for those non-Indigenous people, if you're feeling our hurt, if you've got a good bone in your body, you'll understand that these are the struggles we go through on a daily basis. We look at our superstars, our sports heroes, you know, the politicians that we're supposed to look up to. You know, they're the ones that should be in there supporting us as grassroots sitting around the campfire and having this yarn about what's going to be a better life through education, through employment, so that we have our own CEOs, our own general managers that can produce and support us at the top level. Yeah, and so I think, you know, there's been a bit of a talk about, you know, a national gathering in Canberra because all of the First Nations need to come together now and assert their inherent rights. So they're talking about having a get together at the Aboriginal Tembassy on the 24th of June. Um, so did you want to say anything about that? Oh, very much so. You know, after the walkout, after the whole referendum dialogue up here at Uluru, it's about us gathering together, using social media as our platform, to see if you know anything about the referendum dialogues, about the constitutional reform, what's happening at government level. So we... As, as the people up this way are sending the message out to you, Mob, the 24th of June is coming down to Canberra to the 10 Embassy, where for 45, 46 years, it's been our place of getting together, having that yarn about what's going to make things better for us. So I ask you to come down to the 10 Embassy to converge on Canberra to talk about the issues that's going to affect us, and not just us, but our children's children. So if you've got that strong political people in your, in your family, send them down. If you want to know a little bit more, come on down. This is about the power of the people that's going to have that voice to get through to government, to get to, through to our local Aboriginal organisations and corporations, to say that you can't bully us, that you's, we at the, at the grassroots level need to have that power to be able to assert our authority in saying we were First Nations. We've never ceded our sovereignty. This wasn't about a treaty. This is about coming together as a people and making sure that our, our song lines, our dance lines, our ceremony is all going to be intact after this fight that I'm fighting, I'm long and gone, so our children's children will be able to stand up proud in their communities, knowing who they are and where they're from. So this is a national call to action to come to Canberra on the 24th of June. Be prepared to stay. On the 30th of June, the referendum council ends and then, you know, God knows, the words are in the government hands and not in you know, the people's hands and it'll go to referendum with unknown wording because all throughout these dialogues there are no words on the table. So the referendum council and the government can script any constitutional changes they like and it's out of, out of hands from there on. So, Dave, did you have any final thoughts that you wanted to share before we hit the road? It's going to be a long trip home, but plenty of thoughts are going to be going through my mind about what's just happened here up at uh, the Northern Territory's Uluru. You know, it was a fantastic time, got to meet some fantastic locals, hear some sad stories, 
but this is about us reflecting on what's going to happen, strategic put, put together a plan, the same way the government does, and I want you at grassroots level to go home and talk to your auntie, your grandmother, your grandfather. Ask them what the struggles were like. You know, and if you're going to be our voice for the future, then we need you there at Canberra on the 24th of June to come down and have your voices heard. Strategic, put a plan together so we can take the government, you know, to counteract what this Referendum Council's consultation was all about. And if they cons consulted you as one of those 28,000 members as a part of the Land Council, you know, hats off to Roy in saying he's done that good job. But if he hasn't spoken to you or you haven't got that pamphlet in the mail, you know, this is about you understanding your rights, your legal rights, your human rights, you know, and you as a First Nations people that can trace your bloodlines way back to first contact, these are the people that we need at the 10 Embassy to have your voices heard. Thanks for your time today, Dave, and safe travels.